Hello? Hi, is this Nick Dolly? Yes, I'm here. Hi, this is Steve Jewin from MMA Mania. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, and you? I'm okay. I'm glad I got a chance to talk to you about this fight you got coming up for Combat Day Americas. But last I knew, you were retired, but now you've got a fight coming up in a couple of weeks. So I guess the first major question then is what changed? Um, you know, there's a lot of things that changed. Um, it's really, it's like a really, really long story, and I, and it's very personal, and I really don't want to get into it. So, um, I just had some really crazy things happen during my last fight camp that, um, it just really left a really bad taste in my mouth for MMA. And, uh, some of it, you know, was related to some of the people that I was working with at the time. And, and then I had some other personal things with my family go on as well. So it was a very, I mean, I love fight camps. Like I love the stress of like getting for a ready, getting ready for a fight and, training and and all that but it was it was just too much you know and I felt like I was done and I felt like certain people were taking advantage of me and uh I was just done with it you know but uh what changed was I I never quit going to the gym oddly enough I was like oh you know I still love training so you know I just continued training and I just I could not let it go I could I just still had so much love for the sport and I was just like, well, you know what? I, if I do end up getting a good opportunity, then I'll come back and fight. If not, I'll just continue just training and you know, whatever. And that's pretty much what happened. So combat to Americas was clearly that right opportunity. And it sounds like you've got whatever personal things were going on that you don't want to talk about. And I respect that, but it sounds like those things are in the past now and you're with a different organization now. So it sounds like everything is coming together for you. Oh yeah. Like, um, like I've been telling everyone, you know, I honestly a hundred percent feel that I had to go through those things to be where I am mentally now. Um, it's made me so much stronger um, I've had to go, I, I had to go through, for a lack of a better world, word, bullshit, you know, and um, I feel like it made me stronger, you know? What doesn't kill you makes you stranger or stronger, <laughs> whatever you prefer, right? Yeah, well, maybe it's a little bit of both because, you know, at the same time, it was strange to go out on a loss, but if you're stronger now, you get a chance to come back and show everybody that's not who you are. Exactly. You know, and... You know, what a lot of people don't realize is, like, whenever I did fight my last fight, I hadn't fought in a year. I fought the number six girl in the world, and she just fought six weeks before that. So she was fresh, and I wasn't, you know? So there's, you know, there's a lot of things that go into losses that people don't realize, you know? I thought I did great. I thought I won that fight. But, you know, it's not up to me. It was up to the judges. So whatever, you know? My yeah. fault for letting it go to the judges. I tried everything I could to finish it, you know? That last 10 seconds, I had her in a choke, and I I was doing everything I can to try to make her tap. And she even said in her interview afterwards that, you know, had it been some few more seconds, she would have been out. Right, yeah. If that, if that final round with Jody Escabel had been five minutes and five seconds, you would be the winner of this fight. For sure. So I don't feel bad about it. Yeah. I feel, like I said, I feel really good. And you mentioned the fight before that, fought the number six woman in the world, and I was actually there for Invicta in Kansas City, so I remember that fight. It was with Jessica Penny. Oh, she, yeah, she, I, she, yeah, she just fought for the UFC title. So, yeah. I mean, my last two losses, come on now. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you've been, come in on. There, you've been in there with some of the best, and you've had fights that you won that you didn't get a chance to win. So it's been right there knocking on the door. But I mean, that's sort of the hard luck breaks that happen to a lot of fighters is that, you know, like you said, leaving it to the judges, you never know what's going to happen when they look at it. And they may think completely the opposite from what the fans and the audience are watching. Oh, yeah, totally. And, you know, I just feel like I'm a different person now and a different fighter because of the things that I went through. Um, I'm more confident in myself and my abilities and, you know, who I am as a person. So I really, I don't know, I really don't give a fuck who I'm standing across from. I just want to fucking fight and I just want to win. Well, you got that <laughs> up. my language. <laughs> no, but, it's, you know. it's okay. I don't think they're going to censor it on Mania, so don't worry about it. But 
Let me ask you right. about Katie Collins because she's coming in two and one, and uh, you said you don't give a fuck who it is, but at the same time, you must think she's a good opponent for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, one thing about her that I like is she's always professional. She always shows up to fight. She always makes weight, you know, so I like that. There's people that don't do that, so, you know. Now, this is a fight at straw weight, right, or is it going to be at atom weight? I wasn't sure. No, it's going to be at straw weight. Okay, so do you feel like that's going to be the new fit for you going forward? You're going to continue to fight at straw weight? Yes. Um, I've actually put on more muscle. Um, I'm 30 now, you know, so uh, going down to 105 is uh, not an option unless I want to starve myself and or lose muscle, and I just don't want to do that anymore, you know? And it's not that unusual anymore because we've seen a lot of people coming up to straw weight to try to get into UFC. So it seems to be that that's the bigger weight class, no pun intended, right now. <laughs> For sure. Is that something that you see in your future now that everything's coming together? Or do you think you'll be with Combate Americas for a while? I really don't even want to think about that right now. Um, right now, my main focus is September 17th, Katie Collins. And that's it. I mean, I don't want to think about the future. I just want to think about now. And that's it. You know, I completely understand that. I, I'm keeping my mind open. I mean, I'm open to all possibilities, but right now, I just September 17, Katie Collins. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the only other reason I mention it is because it seemed like Invicta being streamed on UFC Fight Pass, it kind of feels like, in some ways, Invicta became part of UFC. Like, not officially, but just like that relationship made it seem like people could easily jump to UFC. Mm -hmm. I can see why people would think that. I wouldn't, I don't know, I'm, I, you know, I don't work with them anymore. I never was, like, on the inside with them, so I don't, you know, you'd have to talk to them about that. Right, of course. You know? What led you to Combat to America then? Did they, uh, did they just reach out and say, we think you're really talented and we want you on this card? Or did you send feelers out? How did it come together? Pretty much what happened was, um, I believe uh, I used to work with Mike. I don't want to butcher his last name, but I know he works with, uh, he used to work with uh, Invicta. Now he works with uh, the World Series of Fighting as you mean well. Mike Afromowitz. As, yes. And um, I believe he got in contact with the matchmaker, and they were looking for, you know, a Latina, like, MMA fighter who was experienced, who, uh, you know, wasn't signed. And that was pretty much me and, like, a few other girls. And, you know, Mike, having worked with me and my husband in the past in Strikeforce, um, you know, thought about me. And uh, they called me and see if I wanted an opportunity. And... You know, I've been training. I had, I was actually supposed to fight in June. My opponent didn't show up the day of the fight. So I took it as, you know, this is my destiny. This is what the universe and God wants to happen. And so it's happening. So I'm, I'm excited about it. Did you ever find out why your opponent didn't show up? Um, I just heard rumors, nothing official, but I heard that she got arrested. Oh, ouch. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of tough to take a fight when you get arrested. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right? That, that actually happened once in a fight I went to cover. Uh, Jeremy Stevens got arrested the morning his fight was supposed to take place. Yeah. Like, like so, I, it was just silly to me because it's like they knew about this guy for months and they waited until the day of his fight to drive up to Minneapolis and find him. I mean, why? <laughs> I still don't understand. Who knows? That. Yeah. I, people are, it, life is crazy. You never know. So you just got to, you know. <laughs> You gotta go with it. Yeah, you do. But I was so pissed off that day. I was like, "Are you kidding me?" Like, I had just got my hair braided when they called me and told me she wasn't coming. I was like, "What?" I was so mad. <laughs> but did you still I get your me. winner's bonus and winner's purse and everything for that? Even though or your opponent didn't show up, did you still get paid? No, I don't. I only got my show money, which is fine. I'm fine with that. You know, at least they were gracious enough to do that for me. But. You know, I really wanted to fight. I, the money wasn't an issue, you know, at that point. Well, I guess in the, you can kind of put not just the money in the bank, but the training in the bank, because now you're even more ready for Katie Collins than you would have been. I completely agree with that. So, What do you think is going to be the single biggest obstacle she presents to you in the fight? Um, I, I really, I mean, I don't know. She's going to come, she's going to fight me hard and, you know, you never know what to expect because, you know, I do have 16, 17 fights or whatever. And, you know, sometimes you expect something from someone and they come out totally different. 
so I, I really don't have any expectations of like what, you know, I just know what I have to do and that's all I'm focusing on, you know? So. You mentioned earlier that Combate Americas was looking for a Latina female fighter that hadn't been signed yet, and obviously that's part of their demographic, and that's the channels that they're on on cable and satellite, but is that something that's important to you, is is to represent Latinas in mixed martial arts? I'm a Mexican immigrant. I came here when I was five. I couldn't even speak English. Um, I was illegal. I'm an American citizen now. I'm like the true American story. Why wouldn't that appeal to me? I want to, I wanna like, inspire other people like myself to follow their dreams because, you know, there's a lot of times when people will put, put immigrants down, but isn't that what America is about? I mean, this entire country is immigrants. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody here that's like other than native Americans. There's nobody original here. Yes. And I am, I am proud of that. I'm, I'm very proud of that. And I just want to inspire anyone that, you know, um, comes from that background or any type of, background that can you know relate to me and my story and uh overcome all the obstacles they need to to make their dreams come true you know it it almost seems like with some of the female fighters out there they forget to tell that story or doesn't get the exposure you know it's like that's what's great about combat day americas is it's given you know both male and female the teen fighters the chance to go out and be showcased on a national spotlight i agree with that and that's one thing i really really love what uh campbell mclaren and mike and mel are doing you know they're really giving us um latino and non-latino fighters to um have the platform to do that you know on nbc universo and i just i don't know i'm just really excited it's a huge opportunity and uh i think there's gonna be some great fights that night what do you think Oh, I think it's an excellent card top to bottom. I mean, to, I'm glad I've got NBC Universal on my package so I can watch this card. It's at the, for those who don't know, we're listening to this right now. It's at the D Casino and Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. And, and the main event that night is a barn burner for sure. Ramiro Hernandez and Mac. Boy, I, there's suddenly a ton of background noise. I don't know what's going on. But, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll try that again. Ramiro Hernandez and Max Cinescenero. So that should be an awesome fight. Oh, yeah. Really, uh, I really like uh, El Gallero. I like, I'm like. i excited to be on the card with him. He's really he's reached out to me and been really nice and everything. So, And uh, also, one thing is uh, Misha Tate is going to corner me for this fight again. She hasn't cornered me in a couple fights, so I'm really excited about that. Mm-hmm. You know, she's taking time out of her busy schedule to support me in my dream. So I'm excited. Yeah, she's a great person. How long have you two known each other? Um, I'm not sure, but I know that we've known each other since Bodog Hook and Shoot, and I think that was in 2007. I know that her and I have been, like, really good friends since 2010. So, well, my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned Hook and Shoot. Uh, how long were you there? How long were you fighting with them? Um, well, I just did the Bodog Hook and Shoot tournament. Oh, just The that. 125 and the 135, and uh, where, the one where Caitlin Young knocked everybody out. Right. I, I didn't fight her. I got beat by uh, Patty Lee by heel hook, but I had a knockout as well that night, which people don't know about because Caitlin stole my thunder. But, uh, yeah, I KO'd uh, Jennifer Badcock. You know, and that was at 125. So, yeah, obviously, you know, you, you were going up in weight at that point, too. So, really, strawweight's not a problem for you because you were already fighting at flyweight. Oh, yeah. I mean, I used to be a bigger girl, you know, before I started fighting and just working out and diet, exercise, you know, whatever, the whole thing, like, makes you smaller. But to, to, to make 105 really was really difficult for me, you know. I had, to, I had to do some starvation techniques, and I'm just like, that's not healthy, and I'm, I'm, I don't want to be unhealthy anymore. You know, well, it's good timing because I was just talking to a fighter a little bit ago about that. There was a big article on Bleacher Report today about fighters who are starving themselves and having kidney failure and dehydration issues before fights. And it sounds like not not only that, but all the all the things that it does to your brain. You know, cutting cutting too much weight. You know, and mess and it messes with your cognitive function. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, no. You know, I'm already I'm already doing a sport that I love. I'm already getting. Kick, kick, elbow, knee in the head, and God knows what that's doing to my brain, whatever. I don't care, but I don't want to add to that. You, right. know, you know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, you don't want to so. compound it and make it worse. You want to just fight at your natural healthy ability without having to worry about other things being compounded on top of that. Exactly. Now, the other reason I wanted to ask a little more about Hook and Shoot is I've interviewed Paul Lazenby several times, and he always tells me that he feels like Hook and Shoot was a women's MMA pioneer, and they don't get the respect for that that they deserve. I I completely, 100% agree with that. Why do you think they because, get overlooked so much? Thing? Sorry, go ahead. Because they were the pioneer. I mean, they, they did it women's MMA before anyone else did. I mean, Shelby, I can't remember her last name, but Shelby, Tara La Rosa, uh, Kelly uh, Cobalt, one of my all-time favorites and person I look up to and friend, Shayna Baszler, you know. I mean, she did the twister before the Korean zombie did. <laughs> That's right. You know, in, in an MMA fight, and no one knows that. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, she's way more awesome, mm. you know, because she's a chick. So, I don't know, whatever. Just my opinion. <laughs> No, I, I had big hopes for her when I saw her on The Ultimate Fighter because I knew about her record coming in, and I, I just couldn't believe the way things went. I'm like, this is the queen of spades. I thought she would run through this thing. Well, people don't know who Juliana was, and Juliana is a freaking bee. No. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, we learned She's a, a bee. Yeah, we learned a lot of things in that tournament. People we thought going in were, were beasts, and then people we didn't know were beasts. And it sounds like a beast barking in the background right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that your dog or somebody else's? Is that the neighbor's dog? Oh, my neighbor, her English bulldog. The noisy ass bulldog, I'll say that much. So people mm-hmm. listening, don't don't blame our our guest because that's next door. You can't blame Nick Dolly for that. But hey, yep, sorry. That's that's all right. Maybe that's a metaphor for what you're gonna do to Katie Collins. Maybe you're just gonna bulldog her around the cage. I don't know. You'll just have to tune tune in and watch September seventeenth on NBC, see what's up. You yeah. know, it's definitely gonna be an exciting fight. And I feel completely confident in my abilities. Mm. So you're just going to have to check it out and see what happens. Absolutely. You know? Yep. On NBC Universal, September 17th, the Night Queen, Nicdali Rivera Kalanak, will be fighting against Katie Collins. So it's going to be an excellent yep. fight. Before I let you go, let me get out some social media plugs. Anything you want to mention, anywhere people can follow you, let people know. Okay. Well, um, my Twitter is at Nicdali, which is N I C C A L I. And that's my name, and that's my Instagram, and that's my Facebook, so you can just find me very easily. And um, I'd like to thank uh, one, my, one of my new sponsors, uh, Ross J's Aloha Grill. They're my favorite restaurant in Vegas, actually. They're Hawaiian food, and they're amazing. Check them out if you're in the Las Vegas area. Babes of MMA. Um, Garden of Life supplements, vitamins, they're awesome. They use uh, nothing but organic and uh, nothing but organic ingredients and the highest quality. And um, I'm trying to think of who else if I'm missing anybody. Oh, my goodness. I probably am. I'm sorry if I am. I need to write this down before I get down here. Well, you know what? It's all right, but, though, because anybody that you didn't mention right now, when you win against Katie Collins, you'll get the interview, and you'll have time to mention them there. For sure. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll be looking forward to the fight September 17th at the D. Uh, let me get the name of this casino right again. The D Casino and Hotel. I don't think I've been to that yeah. one before. So, uh, is it it's, on the- on, it's, on, it's on Fremont Street, and uh, from what I understand, it's like under the Fremont Street or by the Fremont Street experience, so... Uh, one of my friends was telling me that it's, like, really cool when they have venues like that. Really eclectic, so. So I guess that'd be just down the street from the plaza, then. Um, it used to be the Fitzgerald, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I'll make sure to look that up afterward and mark it down on the map. But I want everybody to know where to go to check out the fight. And if they can't be there in person, they can watch it on NBC Universal. So thank you again for the interview. You've been very gracious today. And I hope the fight goes really well for you on September 17th. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Take care and talk to you later. Bye-bye.